actually, and this is where Casey is supposed to be, but as you guys can see, Casey's not here. <laughs> So, to stay on the earth in one place, um, Perot, a political figure, and Sis, his sister. So, to stay on the earth in one place with Perot and his sister, that is osteopathiosis. <laughs> Actually, um, that's amazing, Casey, because that is so wrong. What do you mean? And then you tell everyone what osteopathic your nose is. <laughs> All right, fine. I will. All right. Because I did the research. Osteoporosis is the condition whereby bones become brittle and they break. Ah, that's smart! <laughs> you know how sometimes you see older people stooped over? Hey, you don't get off my lawn! <laughs> well, this is mostly caused by not having enough calcium and not exercising. It's currently in epidemic. It affects one in two women over the age of 65 in America today. One out of two women over the age of 65. According to my calculations, that would be half. Thanks, Einstein. Okay, why are we telling them about osteoporosis now? I mean, we might as well tell them how to apply to a nursing home. Since our bodies don't produce cal calcium naturally, we have to get it from the foods that we eat. Captain, I see a ship. Oh, the men are hunched over. I think they have osteo tapioca, big sack of potatoes. <laughs> Sit. Our bones can suffer if we're not careful with our diet, just like this specimen right here, Casey. Yeah. Can you tell everybody what this is? Yes, um, this is Florida. <laughs> Italy, Madagascar, Swiss cheese. I'm no, this would be an unhealthy bone. The patient here has suffered a severe case of osteoporosis. The patient. What is this, ER? Do we care about the patient? <laughs> what is her name? Her name is Tanya Harris. Okay, and how did old-timer Tanya Harris get to be that way? A little too much prune juice? So <laughs> no. Actually, she's not an old-timer. Tanya Harris is a girl of 16, and although her actual age is 16, Tanya's bones are as brittle as a 70-year-old woman's. Do you know how she got this way? Left the lid open on her time machine? <laughs> no. <laughs> Because at the time of this photo, Tanya weighed 90 pounds. 90 pounds? Yes, 90 pounds. And for you guys, that's no problem. But for Tanya, she's about 5'6". She should weigh maybe about 135 pounds. When Tanya was brought to the uh, hospital, she was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa with a 24% bone loss due to self-induced starvation, with a host of critical complications related to malnutrition. Okay, but she's not like an archaeological finding, you know? She's a human being. Uh, we could use a human vocabulary, like um, little words about this big for me. For you? Yeah. All right. In order to control her weight, Tanya had stopped eating. <laughs> Stopped eating? You can't stop eating. You need food to live. No kidding, I know, but somehow Tanya got the message that she was fat. And like many girls and many boys, she started skipping meals, living on diet soda and celery. And now Tanya is thin. In fact, she's deathly thin. Her bones are wasting away. She is an osteoporosis victim at 16. 
Now don't you understand why it's important that we tell them about yes, this I do stuff understand. now? This is I mean, very important, serious, serious, intense stuff. I agree. It's very important stuff. Um, all I'm saying is, let's not forget about fun. As in, while we present the information, wouldn't it be neat to have some? Yes, but, but Casey, we don't have time for fun. We still have to go over exercise. We have time for fun. You know what? Mix so these charts fun. all together because I have the perfect visual aid right here. Answer to everything right here. Ha! And what do you suppose Barbie has to do with any of this? Well, if you take your nose out of the medical journals for un memento and join the human race, you just might learn something. <laughs> Listen, mister, I haven't read a book ever. I read a book once. One fish, two fish? Red fish, blue fish. <laughs> I spent a lot of time preparing this presentation. You know that. I was at the library doing research and, well, frankly, I don't expect to be interrupted by Barbie. Here. Hold this. If you know so much, maybe you should finish, because I'm going to um, take no, no, a break. No, 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 I don't know. I just wanted to show you that if you blew this doll up to human size... Human that... size. Okay, you do that. You see what I was talking about, Julie? <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 I have it. I have it right here. Last kind of Barbie, run away with me. We'll go to Paris. We'll eat crepes, Suzette, by sunset. Then again, you probably wouldn't want to eat crepes because of the diet you're on. Then yes, we'll dance until dawn. But you probably wouldn't want to dance because it would mess up your hair. You see, I just wanted to show Julie how unhealthy this doll would actually be, especially with the price tag hanging off her neck. Hold on, just a second. I gotta Casey, I was thinking about what you said, and I'm. <laughs> This is what you wanted to show me, hmm? You're sick. I'm not sick. I'm trying to prove a point. All right, check it out. Over 800 million Barbies have been sold throughout the world. The average American girl owns eight in her lifetime. She probably had about 30. Did not. But <laughs> Barbie has become our nation's symbol for beauty. We struggle beyond our natural capabilities to look something like this, and it's actually just not possible. Wait a second. You wanted to look like Barbie? <laughs> no, I didn't want to look like Barbie, thank you very much, but a lot of girls do, and it's just not healthy. You have no evidence to support this claim. Evidence? Claim? Mm -hmm. I think you're defending Barbie. Oh, no. Okay, it's time for a little fun. It's time for the People's Court. Today in the People's Court, it's the People versus Barbie. <laughs> and over in this corner, defending Barbie, we have Julie no. the Crusher no. Perkins, famed attorney with the offices of Dewey Cheatham. And how? And over in this corner, defending the people, it's Boston's own legal demigod himself. It's Casey, the Titan, Clark! <laughs> Who joined the session already in progress? All rise for the Honorable Judge Judy. <laughs> Your Honor, I would like to call as my first witness, Miss Barbie to the stand. Miss Malibu Barbie, would you please stand up for the court? Objection, Your Honor. You know very well that she cannot stand up. My point exactly. Isn't it true that you are unable to stand up because, <laughs> as a Barbie doll, your proportions are so unrealistic that if you were blown up to human size, your miniature feet could not support you. Your tiny waist would be a mere 18 inches and your tiny little hips would deny you the chance of ever becoming a mother. Barbie. We love you. You gave us Barbie's dream house, Barbie's makeup kit, Barbie's jeans. Let's not forget Barbie's bulimic kitchen. <laughs> Don't listen to him, Barbie. Isn't it also true that, that you were loved by millions of girls throughout the world over? And at one time, wasn't the membership in the Barbie fan club second only to the membership in the Girl Scouts? And at what price, counselor? Isn't it true, Barbie, that only 2% of all American women are biologically capable of having a shape anywhere near yours without resorting to eating disorders like anorexia, which is hardly eating anything at all, or bulimia, which is eating and then intentionally throwing up your meals on a regular basis? That means that 98% of all women cannot look like this naturally, yet girls everywhere are starving for it. Your Honor, Barbie is a... She's a role model for health. She's trim. She works out. She even comes with a, a little gym bag. What does she carry in the little gym bag? Diet pills? <laughs> Your Honor, two-thirds of all fourth-grade girls in this country have already been on a diet, 
By the time they reach high school, many of them have started smoking, skipping meals, exercising frenetically, trying desperately to stay thin at a time in their lives when their bodies need to grow and develop naturally. When they don't feel thin enough, they feel like a failure. I mean, imagine that, millions of girls feeling horrible about themselves because they can't come close to looking like this. Well, they're not supposed to, are they, Barbie? Everyone is different, and different is a good thing. I rest my case. I rest my case in your face. I bring up the base. Well, I hate to admit it, but um, but Casey's right. I did want to look like Barbie when I was growing up. I mean, I thought that's how we were supposed to look. Hold on one second. I'm just gonna do a little experiment. <clears throat> Yeah, well, <laughs> Barbie, I guess I don't look like you. Nope, I guess I don't. That's true, you don't. <laughs> but Casey, you don't understand. I'm supposed to look like her. Says who? Says television, says magazine, says supermodels. And you listen to them? You know what, it's kind of hard not to listen to them. It's like, it's like we're bombarded by these images of these perfect looking people every day. Yeah, but you have the choice whether or not to pay attention to them. You know what, no, sometimes I don't feel like I do have a choice. Sometimes I feel like we're all being programmed or brainwashed into feeling like if we don't look like Barbie or, or those people on television, then we're not attractive. All right, you might be programmed, but we are not programmed. Oh, really? Okay, fine. Speaking of programs, why don't you tell everybody what this is you're watching? This? Mm-hmm. Baywatch. <laughs> they call this show Babe Watch? <laughs> Julie, this is the best part. <laughs> Give me a break. This show is so unreal. Come on, Casey. When was the last time you saw a scantily clad woman running on the beach in slow motion? Just yesterday. Mm -hmm. Hey, baby! <laughs> Come on, Julie, I like this show. Fine, whatever, but why do you like this show? I find it a compelling examination of the human condition, and yes! <laughs> See, look, you are. You're mesmerized by these women who look like Barbie. Well, I wouldn't say I'm mesmerized. Really? No. Okay, you know what, I have a quiz for Casey. <coughs> Let's say that you had the choice between going out with, I don't know, Lauren Hill or Roseanne, who would you choose? <laughs> well, Roseanne is complaining all the time. Oh, Dan, come here. Blah, blah, blah. All right, all right, all right, all right. How about um, Sarah Michelle Gellar or Rosie O'Donnell? Well, Rosie is Rosie, and uh, Sarah Michelle is Sarah Michelle. <laughs> okay, how about Pamela Anderson or... You know what? I can't even think of another chubby Hollywood personality to compare with her. It's almost like they don't even let them on the screen. All right, but you got to admit, Pamela Anderson is not just hot. I mean, she is hot. Okay, fine, hot, maybe, but come on, Casey. I mean, you have to admit, she's not, you know, <laughs> entirely um, real. What? You thought she was born that way, or she A, bleaches her hair, or B, she got collagen injections to make her lips puff out, or C, she got silicone implants to get that, well, you know. <laughs> or, or D, all of the above. Anybody? D. D. D, all of the above. I mean, she's just as much of a man-made creation as, say, who? Barbie. Okay, well, what are you trying to tell me? That a woman can't look like that naturally? No, I'm not saying a woman can't look like that naturally, and I don't want to put down Pamela Anderson either. All I'm saying is that most of us don't look like that, but if you look at television and you read magazines and billboards and movies, they make you think that we all do look like that or that we all should. And I guess all I'm saying is that's not the only way to be attractive. That's a very good point. That is a very good point. And I want to take the other side of that issue for a second. I want to take, uh, for example, Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, or Antonio Banderas. <laughs> I mean, girls go crazy for these guys. And guess what? Most of us don't look like them either. I mean, they come across these superheroes who can do anything. I just spent the last 40 hours in a mine shaft hunting evil men, and I look great. <laughs> You're yeah. right, yes, he's right. 
We're both programmed. Well, I wouldn't say I'm programmed. Okay. I man. mean, if I had the choice between somebody who's comfortable with themselves and somebody who's always obsessing with the way they look, always checking themselves out in the mirror, always on a diet, layer, layering on the makeup, I go with the person who's comfortable with themselves every time. That's fine in theory, but I know. Why don't you give us an example? An example? Mm -hmm. Okay, suppose I had the choice between, say, olive oil or Miss Piggy. Olive oil, on the one hand, Popeye's little girlfriend there, is annoying. I mean, she's obsessed with her thinness. She probably hasn't eaten since 1923 when she was created. But Miss Piggy, on the other hand, is vibrant. She's in love with life. Food. <laughs> Kermie. Oh, Kermie, I love you. Hiya! <laughs> See, she's cool. I go with her every time. I think she's even kind of sexy. <laughs> Casey. What? <laughs> You think a Muppet is sexy? Okay, Julie, back off. <laughs> I'll back off because next we have... <laughs> hold on to your... Well, I was going to say seats, but... Hold on to your butts because... <laughs> next we have the... Food Pyramid! Oh, goody, the Food Pyramid! <laughs> Give me a break. Do you even know what the Food Pyramid is? Yes. What? The food pyramid is the pyramid in Egypt where they keep all the food. <laughs> Wrong. This is the food pyramid. This tells us what to eat the most and the least of for a healthy diet. You start here at the first food group. This is whole grains, breads, cereals, rice, pasta. These are all high in what we call complex carbohydrates, okay? Complex carbohydrates. You know what? Right down this... This half of the room, I want you to say complex. <laughs> Carbohydrates. <laughs> See who can be the loudest. <laughs> oh. I'd say carbohydrates. <laughs> <laughs> well, it gives you long-lasting energy. You need six, 11 to 6 servings of these a day, or it would be 6 to 11. Yeah, you need... <laughs> Next, we have the fruit and the vegetable group. The vegetable group's loaded with vitamins and minerals that help strengthen your immune system so you guys get sick less. They also help stimulate greater brain activity. Does anybody have any vegetables for Casey? What? <laughs> Just kidding. You need five fruits and vegetables every day. Five fruits and vegetables every day? Right. You know, I have a thing. Do you mind if I do this thing? It'll help illustrate that point. Sure. Okay. I started out with two fruits and vegetables every day piece of cake. I want a little more challenge. So I moved up to three fruits and vegetables every day. I started getting more energy. I wanted to feel the best that I possibly could. So I moved up to five fruits and vegetables every day. Five. <laughs> five. Sorry. <laughs> Never eat broccoli with eyes, folks. Okay, five fruits and vegetables every day. I need complete silence, please. Concentrate. <laughs> What'd you say? Five fruits and vegetables every day. Five fruits and vegetables, here we go. Any complete silence, please? Here we go! Welcome, welcome! Okay! <laughs> Next, we have the dairy group. This includes things like milk, cheese, yogurt. These are all high in calcium. Come in, what? Julie, you're putting me to sleep. You want to know why Casey keeps falling asleep? You want to know why? Can anybody answer me why he's falling asleep today? Right there, right there. Because he doesn't eat enough fruits and vegetables? Yeah, that would be it. But specifically, why? Back there. That's a good one. But you know why? Because he did not have breakfast. What? 
Yes. You did? No, you didn't. I had like eggs. <laughs> what do you mean you had like eggs? Well, it wasn't exactly eggs. It was like a toast cereal kind of thing. <laughs> mm. A toast cereal kind of thing, Casey. Yeah, Come it was on. good. It was good. Where did you have uh, my breakfast? <laughs> nothing. I overslept. You know I overslept. I know you overslept, but what's your body going to use for fuel? No wonder you keep falling asleep. You either eat nothing, so Casey dozes off, or you eat fats and sweets, which makes him bounce up and down like a little hyperactive yo-yo. <laughs> You're totally off balance, dude. <laughs> I mean, health-wise. Totally off balance, dude. <laughs> yeah. All right, you. Me. You. You. Me. Don't even know what you're drinking. <laughs> yes, I do. Snaptopia, all-natural fruit beverage. Yes, yeah, Snaptopia, craptopia. <laughs> okay. Forget, forget the healthy-looking packaging, okay? Read the ingre read the ingredients for me. The Would ingredients. You? Yeah. All right. The ingredients. Water. High fructose corn syrup. Sugar. Sucrose. Sugar. Sugar. And hmm, more sugar. No. About 10 to 12 teaspoons in that all natural bottle of yours. And here's another thing. In things like colas, like Pepsi and Coke, there's caffeine, a drug that overstimulates your nervous system so you get wired. <laughs> then eventually crash. <laughs> then to pick yourself back up again, you go for another caffeine or sugar buzz and you go up and down, up and down. Oh, say, like a little hyperactive. <laughs> One more thing. Soda is actually a diuretic. Diarrhea, Casey. Not diarrhea. Diuretic. It uh, dehydrates you. It makes you pee more. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Diuretic means that instead of quenching your thirst, soda, even coffee and alcohol, makes you thirstier. In fact, in 1992, the soft drink industry was proud to announce that soda, bum ba da -ba, had become the most popularly consumed beverage in the whole wide world, beating out water as the number one drink. Now, teenagers drink over 750 cans of this stuff a year. That's $700 going from every person in this room directly into the pockets of the soft drink industry. Now, folks, if there's anyone with an extra 700 bucks just laying around, you could uh, give it to um, me. <laughs> OK, Julie, this is interesting here. Wait, don't hurt my food pyramid. I'm not hurting it. 80% of all food ads, 80% of all ads promoting food goes toward promoting this little part of the pyramid right here. The sugary, oily, processed plastic junk food. Okay, it's cheap to make and easy to sell. The food industry is doing the happy dance because they're making a mint off you guys on junk food. I mean, instead of going for whole foods made by Mother Nature, we go for the sugary, oily, processed plastic junk food made in some factory by a guy named Lou. I mean, Mother Nature? Tweet, tweet, tweet. Lou. Okay, now, teenagers eat mostly from this part of the pyramid right here. Not because they're stupid, but because they've been brainwashed. I mean, no wonder why we're all wired and tired these days. These ads are getting to us. Great, I'll buy, you know, that. But how do we get them to buy, you know, the good stuff? Well, we got to make it jazzy like the advertisers do. Oh, do you have anything jazzy? Yeah, I think I do. Um, do the Jeopardy theme song. St I don't know the Jeopardy theme song. Stalem. Do, do, do. Do, do. <laughs> Broccoli boy. It's kind of, um, it's cute, but a little Sesame Street. Look, I'm Dennis Rodman. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I've got something for you then. What? <laughs> You're a witch. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. All right. Yeah, I can do this. I can do this. I'm not getting enough milk and cheese and yogurt and calcium in my diet. My bones are melting, melting! Ah, what a world! What a world! Keep your day job, Julie. This is my day job. Oh, oh you know, this is cute and everything, but this is the... You know, it's more for little kids. This is the MTV generation, right? We, yeah. Right? I think we need more, something more like MTV. Yeah. That's okay. Good idea. So think MTV. 
All right. MTV. Yeah. Trying to keep it real. <laughs> Just getting jiggy with it. Let's talk about milk, baby. Let's talk about broccoli. Let's talk about all the other foods that keep your bones healthy. Let's talk about cheese. <laughs> Really? Woo! That's good, that's good. Uh, but I said MTV, not Spaz TV. You know what? This is fun and everything, but come on, let's just... I mean, we could promote healthy food. We don't have to get all weird. We could just show them healthy food by showing them, yes, what we brought for our lunch. So why don't you get your no, lunch? No, 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 that's not a good mine. idea because we should stick you to the get charts. Yours. Julie. Please. You're asking for it. <laughs> okay. This is gonna work, all right. <laughs> all right. First, I brought a turkey sandwich. It's got lettuce and tomato. It's got cheese for calcium. It's got whole wheat bread and it's all natural, it tastes really good, and it's good for me. <laughs> What'd you bring? Oh. I brought a Big Mac. Mm. It's got a lot of things I'd rather not get into right now. <laughs> eight teaspoons of fat in here? Yeah. You didn't put that in that song. No. To all beef patties, eight teaspoons of fat. <laughs> all right, nope. next I brought an orange juice to drink. It's all natural, no added sugar. It's I know, it's like drinking a piece of fruit right off the tree. I brought a 44-ounce surge. <laughs> it's got enough sugar and caffeine in it to keep my dad's old truck running for about a year. There's actually 36 teaspoons of sugar in that. 36? Could you imagine eating 36 teaspoons of sugar? <laughs> no, I can't. Okay, next yeah. I brought... I made popcorn last night, so it's cheaper because I just bag it up and take it with me, and I get to make it the way I like it with a, a little butter and a little salt. I brought sour cream and onion potato chips. So I got three-fourths of a stick of butter worth of fat, more salt than you should have in a week, and enough preservatives to keep it lasting fresh well into Y2K. Oh, and look, it, it has sour cream solids. Ooh. I thought that's when sour cream went bad, was when it became a solid. <laughs> okay, next I brought yogurt. It's got fruit in it as well, so it's loaded with calcium and has fruit. I brought the bag. Good fiber. <laughs> Don't eat the bag. You know what? I have an idea. Yeah? We could uh, trade lunches. Well, you know what? Well, actually, Casey, you can keep your lunch, but um, I'll share mine with you. Like, you, you can have half my sandwich and some popcorn and, yeah. Oh, isn't she sweet? <laughs> Would you say I was kooky? You're kooky. I knew it. Okay. What are you like? Next. You ready, Casey? Yeah, yeah. Because next, next we, we have, have smoking. exercise. Smoking. Exercise. Smoking. Exercise. Smoking. I didn't do any research on smoking. I did. I was up all night. I uh, wrote a little little skit. We're going to do a little skit about smoking. What? There's your lines, okay? Uh, wing it. Get in the character. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, hold on. Character, huh? Get in the character. Okay. Do a little skit about smoking. Okay, hold on one second. <laughs> Excuse me, but I'm looking for the head of advertising. Yeah, that's me. Oh, well, I am your new assistant. Hey, my name's Lou. Perhaps you heard of me. Oh, yes, Lou, I have. You are that amazing man who made that new ad campaign for that soda, Splurge. Splurge makes you able to rollerblade up mountains and then off again. Woohoo! Let me just say, Lou, in advertising school, you're like our hero. Hero, really? Just because I can fool a bunch of dopes? Oop. I mean, people into believing that this stuff is good for them? <gasps> what do you mean it's not? What about splurge gives you the urge to surge, or splurge gives you the purge? <laughs> 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 I 
I, I, I. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's not about truth, okay? It's about sales, baby. Sales. Because the more we sell, the more money we make. <gasps> Dig? Dig. All right, let's get to work on a new ad campaign. Oh, I can't believe I'm going to be working with the master of deception in advertising. What's it going to be for? Oh, I know. Is it going to be for some new sugar-filled cereal? But we'll make it sound good for you by calling it Honey Grain Goodness. And we'll have a tie-in with, like... I know, with like the Titanic, a big name movie. Near, far, wherever you are. Rose. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm freezing. <laughs> I'm king of the world, but I'm darn cold. It's, it's not about honey grain goodness of the Titanic. Actually, the product we're selling is cigarettes. Oh, excuse me, did you say majorettes? Nah, I said cigarettes. I was afraid you said that. Is that a problem? Problem? No problem. Good. Then let's get to work. We gotta work with the facts, and the facts, facts. are people aren't smoking as much as they used to. Not oh, I don't wanna die a painful, horrible death from lung cancer. I don't wanna talk with a voice box for the rest of my life. My mouth has cancer. Boo hoo for me. You know what the problem here is? No. Everybody that was hooked on smoking is dead. So we gotta get a whole new generation of people hooked, okay? We market these things to kids. Kids! Yeah, 12, 13 years old, I think. Get them while they're vulnerable, okay? We gotta make it seem cool because every good ad person knows that kids wanna be cool. So I'm thinking we need an animal. No. Nope. Like a giraffe. Yeah, smoking giraffe. Smoking giraffe. Yeah, Joe giraffe. Joe giraffe. Okay? We put them in cool situations, cool situations. with cool babes. Cool babes. Everybody's laughing, laughing and smoking and having a good time. And then they all die of cancer. What? They, they I, nothing. I was thinking billboards, and yeah, we have products with our groovy new logo on it. Mm -hmm. Beach blankets, t-shirts, baseball caps, okay? Yep, yep. And then we have coupons, so coupons. The, more, the more you smoke, smoke. the more you can buy, buy. And these kids become walking advertisements for us when they wear this cheap stuff with our logo on it. I'm a genius! <laughs> Wait a second, Lou. I don't want to sell cigarettes. I want to sell things like candy bars or a new diet shake. Diet shake? Diet smoke. Kid, you're the genius. No. We market these only to females, and we show them that they can smoke instead of eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cigarettes instead of food. We show images of tall, sexy women. All they do is smoke. They never eat. And we we'll call them D-lights. Lighten up with D-lights. No! Snap out of it! I, 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 I. What about truth in advertising? Truth, schmooth, okay? People like to be lied to, all right? They don't want to know that there's too much sugar and caffeine in splurge. They don't, they don't want to know that cigarettes is going to give them lung cancer. They want to know, they want to, they want to think that this stuff is good for them, make them cool, popular. I, I have an idea, I have an idea. What about if we're different? Instead, we could tell people the truth. Okay, follow me here, Lou. How about we could say things like, if you smoke, it'll make your clothes and your breath stink, so actually you can keep people that you hate away from you. Well, and people that you like too, but whatever. Oh, or we could say things like, having a bad week, having a bad day. Well, don't you worry, smoke a cigarette, because each cigarette takes six minutes off your life. You do the math. Or we could say things like, um, Oh, cigarettes have so many chemicals in them designed to get you hooked so then you can't stop buying them and you have to keep on buying them. And suddenly you're really being really stupid spending thousands of dollars a year on cigarettes and, well, then you can't even walk up a few steps, well, to say goodnight to your granddaughter because you can't breathe and, and you can't even sing happy birthday to her when she turns six because you can't breathe. And you can't even sing happy birthday to her when she turns seven because... Whoa, 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 Julie, that's not in the script. What's going on? You're right, it's not in the script, but it just reminded me of my grandfather. He used to smoke. You know what? I didn't realize how affected we are by advertising. It it's really makes true. me mad. It's very powerful. Well, we don't even realize it. Okay. Give Barbie her hair back. Ooh. So. Now what do we do? Uh, now what do we do? E. X. Exercise! exercise. Okay. okay, good idea, good idea. All right, all right. Ready for exercise? Yeah. Okay. We. Uh, I happen to bring some fan fancy, fancy, you know, exercise tools to show you, and hopefully Casey will demonstrate those for us. Did you say fancy, fancy exercise? I, I, tools? I meant to say fancy, dancy. Fancy <laughs> exercise tools. Let's see what you brought. Oh, that's a good one. What is this? The Buttmaster. <laughs> I am Buttmaster of the Universe. <laughs> People of Earth, I mean you no harm. Doctor, 
We're losing her. We need four ounces of whoopee stock. Clear. Clear. Don't you like mashed potatoes with this thing? No. How long did you actually use it? I used it for a good long time. Never mind. Okay. I used it for a good long day. Okay. <laughs> well, I couldn't figure it out. It was boring. Is, is this a thing too? Oh no, that's a step. A step? Yeah, a step. It's actually a super step. <laughs> a super step? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Woo! I feel better already. And I have an idea. We could take like 20 of these things, put them all in a row, and call them stairs. Maybe if we took the stairs instead of the escalator. Now, this doesn't belong here. I, you know what? I was wondering what this is. I didn't put this in here. The ab isolator. No, no, no. See, I'm holding this for a friend. It's like an archery thing that you dig with and uh, you kind of hang out on weekends. You're just like, hey, man, what's up? <laughs> what's going on? <sighs> I just wanted to look good. Is that so bad? No, it's not. But come on, Casey. Admit it. You didn't want to just look good. You wanted to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's not the tumor. Wesley Snipes. Okay. Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So maybe I didn't end up looking like Jackie Chan, but I just wasn't having enough fun with it, you know? That's the thing about exercise. You got to find something that you like to do, so when you do it, you'll enjoy doing it, and then you'll keep on doing it. And there's tons of things out there that are both good for you and fun. Game of charades to show them what we're talking about. Sure. We're going to do a game, sport, exercise, whatever. You guys shout it out. Guess what it is, all right? That's okay, it. I got one. Soccer! River dance. <laughs> Ultimate frisbee, dude. Okay. Tybo. <laughs> All right, cool. Just jamming up the music while your parents aren't around and dancing around the house. You know, get your blood going. It's exercise. It's Julie? Yes? Why do you have these? Because, you know, they were part of the presentation. I thought that they'd make me look smarter. Make you look smarter? Mm -hmm. Do they make me look smart, huh? No. Nope. No. My point exactly. It doesn't matter what you look like. You're, you're smart regardless. I mean, look at the presentation you put together. That's proving your point, you know? I mean, me, abs of steel, you, phony glasses to make you look smarter. That's the thing, is we get all these messages telling us how to be, you know? T messages from the media, magazines, supermodels, movies, famous actors, people who influence us, your mother. It, My mother? No, I said we're smothered by all these images and it's hot. No, 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 no. You said my mother. And wouldn't we all like to know what Casey has to say about my mother? Yeah! Okay, example. Sitting around the dining room table having dinner, you reach for a second helping of mashed potatoes and your mother says, Julie, you might as well put that right on your thighs. <laughs> Meanwhile, your brother Bruno is knee deep in mashed potatoes. She turns to him and says, Bruno, you eat up. I love it when you eat. So why is it okay for your brother Bruno to have a second helping and not for you? I don't know, Casey, but my mother isn't programming me. You know, my mother loves me. Of course she loves you, but that doesn't mean that she doesn't influence you. Which brings me back to the point I was trying to make at the top of the show, which will wrap up rather nicely in a game show I like to call, nice and loud, everyone. No! Okay. Yeah! A game show where we bring people back from your past just to embarrass the heck out of you. And our first guest comes in from Fox River Grove, Illinois. Please give a warm welcome for Miss Julie Perkins. Thank you. Welcome to the show, everyone. And how are you feeling today, Julie? Well, actually, I was... That's great. <laughs> and our next guest comes in from Hicksville, Kansas. You know her. You love her. You spent summers at her house. It's not funny. It's your mother's favorite sister. It's your aunt, Helene. <laughs> cutest little girl. I'd say you were cookie. <laughs> but remember, Julie, you had something, you always had something to say. And I just wanted to say that little girls should be seen, not heard. 
Wait a second, Aunt Helene. Well, maybe because I always had something to say because I was very intelligent and I was, had lots of important things to, you know, express. And, well, your views of little girls being seen in that herd are about as outdated as your, y y your, um, glasses. Oh, these old things. I got them on sale. I had a coupon. <laughs> now, listen, Julie, I have a little gift for you. Little lipstick. Make yourself a little more feminine. Maybe catch a man. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Clap. And our next guest comes in from Revere Beach, Beach, Massachusetts. He's that special guy who took you to that all-too-special prom. Please give it up for Jimmy the Bambino Testosterino. <laughs> hey, Julie. Hey, is that you behind that bag? No. Hey, Julie. It's a long time no see, huh? Look yeah. Look at them great jeans you used to wear. Yes, I do. I wore them two sizes too small. When I breathed deep, my buttons would pop off. So don't breathe so deep. My friends thought I was so cool because you was so smoking. <laughs> Excuse me? You look cool because I look what? Smoking? Yeah. <laughs> you know what, Jimmy? Hey. If, if you want yourself a status symbol, Maybe you should win yourself a bowling trophy or something. <laughs> bowling trophy. Yeah, bowling trophy. <laughs> I like that idea. Hey. I'm going to do that. Good. One good one for Julie. Are you looking at me? Are you looking at me? There ain't nobody else here. After school bike rack. <laughs> and our next guest comes in from Ronkonkoma, Long Island. He's the guy who made you into the person you are today. Please give it up for your high school cheerleading coach, Mr. Gary Goldstone. <laughs> Julie, you were the greatest cheerleader. Yeah. And you used to say to us, he used to say to us, do whatever it takes to keep a size six. A uh, size six. All my girls were a size six. If I could have, I would have been a size six. So you want to know what we did? We all started taking diet pills. We thought we had to take diet pills to stay on the cheerleading team. You know, taking diet pills to convince your body you're not hungry for food is not only really dangerous, it's also really stupid. Diet pills? I may have said aspirin for a headache, but diet pills? Oh, and then I remember the diets straight out of my favorite fashion magazine. Do they tell me 1,500 calories a day? No. Do they say 1,200 calories a day? No. They said 700 calories a day. On that stupid diet, I had no energy. I was starving my body. And they never said that when you diet a lot when you're younger, it's almost impossible to lose weight when you get older. Well, think of all the fun we had. I wish I could remember. I was lightheaded for like two years. Ah, Julie, that's all water under the bridge. Bridge over troubled waters. Don't go breaking my heart, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I got a brand new idea. The alumni cheerleading squad. <laughs> and of course, I'd want you to be on it. But you'd have to lose a little weight. Oh. Just a little bit, like five pounds. <laughs> Everyone's got to fit into the scene. Get out. But, but Julie. Go. But, but, Disappear. But, but, you, go away. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? Casey's right. All of these people are telling me how to look and how to be. I mean, Aunt Helene, Jimmy, magazines, television, even sometimes my mother, well-meaning though she is. You know what? That's it. No more. Because this is my body, and this is my life. And I'm going to make it an awesome one. Woo! Awesome. <laughs> come here, come here, come here, come here. Basically, Casey, you ruined my presentation. But it's OK, it's OK, because you made me realize so many things about myself. Yeah? Yes. And I appreciate it. Thanks. Cool, no problem. You helped me realize some things, too. Like, I'm definitely going to start eating breakfast so really? I have energy for the day. Really? Yeah. Good. So why don't you say we do the last chart together? Instead of the last boring chart, let's do that um, David Letterman top five thing that we made up. Top five? Yeah. OK. Coming at you live from the home office in Boston, Massachusetts, it's the top five things that Julie and Casey learned today. Drum roll, please. Number five, caffeine is not a vegetable. Energy comes from food. 
Number four, ads on television are about as truthful as you are when your mother says, do you have any homework tonight? <laughs> Number three, channel surfing is not considered good cardiovascular exercise. Number two, Pamela Anderson is artificially made just like Pringles. And the number one thing that Julie and Casey learned today is... This, this is, is your, your life. life. Make, Make it an, an awesome, awesome one. one. Woo! Woo! Thanks, dude. All right. You know what? You guys were the most fabulous audience. I think you should give your own selves a hand. We have one last thing. We have one last thing that we want to um, talk to you guys about. We did a lot of goofy jumping around broccoli hat wear and stuff up here, but we also talked about a lot of really important issues like <laughs> eating disorders, health, body image. And we encourage you guys, if you have any questions about the things that we talked about up here, please make sure you go to the people in your school. We're going to give you some names, people that you can go to to ask these questions and hopefully get some answers. There's so, your health educator, Mrs. Nancy Klein. Is she here? She just oh. left, but do you know who she is? Yeah. All right. All right, cool. yeah, yeah. Um, you have your school nurse, Mrs. Marianne Lamy? Yeah. Where, is she here? No. But you There's know who two she of is? Them. There's two of them. There's uh, also Mrs. Mary Zakruski. Is she here? All right, but you guys know who these two women are, right? Yeah, yeah okay. Guidance your guidance counselor, Mr. Kevin Donahue? Yeah. All right, woo, yeah, all right. Is he here? He's, gu he's guiding. That's what he's doing. He's counseling. <laughs> he's counseling. <laughs> Family and consumer health teacher, Mrs. Margaret Dyer. Yep. You know, you know her? Is she here? Not here, not here. Okay, but these are people that you can go to. And your school food service director is Mr. Roland Van Cavalar. And listen, now, if you have any questions about the dangers of smoking, there's a tobacco control officer, Ms. Christy Martin. There's also a DARE officer, Detective Mercedes wow. Roman. Yeah. All right, go ahead. One last thing Casey has to tell you. Oh, okay. We also just wanted to say that, one more second. If you have a friend or a family member that, you're, that, you, that you care about and you're concerned that they're um, overly concerned about their weight or that they might have uh, bulimia or anorexia, you can come up and talk to us because we have sheets of paper with phone numbers and books that you can read to help these people. Okay? Again, you guys, thank you so much.